What's up guys? Today I'm going to teach you how to never get blocked and I know that these tricks work. This is a 7-1 NBA starter and I'm a 5-10 NBA trainer. So I'm going to show you how to get it done even against bigger players. So tip number one, it's all about timing. At seven foot one, I'm not going to elevate above him, but I can get up before him. So you'll see here, I'm getting up first. So you see how I get up first and I get the ball up high early. So even if he does get a good jump at 7-1, by the time he reaches his peak, I'm already releasing the ball. So a lot of it is timing. We can't go to battle and try to always elevate over guys that are way bigger than us. So get up before them or sometimes we use a slow step to get up after them. So sometimes they're in position and they're going to jump early and you just got to take a slow step and wait for them to start to come down and then you go up. So tip number one is play around with that timing. Don't be hard-headed. Don't always try to elevate over these big guys. So this one, a little mid-range. You got to be able to shoot mid-ranges. You can't always try to attack the big. When you get a big outside on the wing, if you can get them rocking a little bit. So I set up with a little cross, and then I go with a little bit of a wide cross. I want a little bit of extra separation, so I do a little touch uh, sidestep. But big guys are always going to drop. They're always going to open up and try to meet you at the rim. And so that mid-range is always going to be there against big guys. Got to be able to hit it. Then this one, this is a big key. You got to be able to hit early against big guys. Let me go back. I get dunked on in this clip. Let me go back. So right here so alex i mean he moves well for seven one like he's got some pretty good quickness that's why he's had you know he's an nba starter right now he's had an eight year nba career so if there's any 10 year olds in the comments that are expecting like every center to be shack and they're mad at them if they're not shack then you've just got to understand how tough it is to make the nba and then to have an eight year nba career it's so rare to do that so First of all, if you're hating, you're clearly lost. Um, and at 7-1 these days, with how fast the game is, you got to be able to really move. If you're still playing in the NBA today and you're 7-1, uh, then you can move for your size. So he's hanging with me step for step. He's so much longer than me that if I just try to find open space, he's going to block it. So I got to hit him on the floor, and that's going to throw off his strides. So watch the hit right there. So I get the ball, I pin it to the outside hand, I hit with the inside hand, and that messes up his timing, that messes up his jump. So now I can come back and I can extend wide. And that's another key right here. So look, I'm hitting with that inside hand, ball is pinned to the body, but he's still right over me and right here is a major key. So I'm extended wide, but you'll also notice that my chest is squared to the baseline or even pointed away. So if my defender is here, if I'm opening up, I'm in trouble. I got to get it as far as possible, full elbow extension, and I got to stay closed off here. That's the only way that I'm getting this shot off. And it just barely gets over his fingertips. And then this play, I'm just getting dunked on. That's going to happen too. All right, so let's go to the next clip. So this is a 6'8 uh, overseas player, and he moves like a guard. So he's going to be able to um, stick with me pretty well on the perimeter. Okay, so big key here when you're playing against bigger guys. They believe that they can block your shot at all times. So anytime that you get the ball up above the head and you show high, they're going to put their hands up. They're going to try to block it. They get a little bit antsy. So I get a little bit of a step on them here. And right there, that's the key point. Ball above the head. It could be two hands or like what I'm doing, I'm showing the ball with one hand. That's going to get both of his hands up and he's going to try to block it on this side. And then I'm coming down and I'm going under. And I had a little bit of spin because I was feeling like Kyrie that day. So I was just showing off a little bit. But uh, show high, go under. Jab step gets you a little bit of separation. Now I can come a little bit more downhill at him. 
chest stays square to the baseline. He's in a really good position. He's playing great defense. Extend out wide. You got to have it with the right and you got to have it with the left. That's a full extension left. Oh, so this is Malcolm Lee. If you've ever seen Malcolm Lee's highlights uh, on my Instagram, this dude is cold. Played in the NBA for probably four years, and he was known as a defender. He's got like a 6'11 wingspan. He's athletic. He's killing overseas right now. Um, run out of space, quick floats. All right, you got to have floaters. You got to have runners off the glass. 5'10 guys like me, you're not always going to be able to battle and finish. Like you got to have, I call it the gray area. It's not quite mid-range. It's not quite layups. It's like that in-between zone where we got little runners. We got little floaters. Got to have it. Get it off the glass. A lot of people have the extension layups when they're close to the basket, but when they're angling out towards the block, that touch is so tough. And so a drill that I do is like I'm angling towards, so I'll start on like the elbow and I'll go towards the opposite block. And I'm just keeping my momentum going towards that block. So it's a really tough angle. And then you just angle it a little bit higher. So like this finish is closer to that first hash. These are tough angles, but these are the shots that you'll always have. This is the shot that Malcolm would want me to shoot, right? You, you're always going to give up something. This is the shot that you would want to give up. So as an undersized guy, you got to ask, or shoot for anybody, even, even somebody with good positional size, you got to ask yourself, what do they want me to shoot? This is the answer. So this is where we spend a lot of time uh, in training. So this one here, Malcolm's in really good position. Watch how far he gets above me. He's extending that 6'11 wingspan. If I open up, I'm in trouble. I got to keep that shoulder into him. My chest stays closed off to the baseline. It's full elbow extension. And finish off the glass. And then you got to talk your stuff. You got to talk your stuff. All right, guys, so that's part one of how to never get blocked. If you want me to make this into a full-on series and keep doing these, let me know. There's a lot of little tips and tricks that can go a long way, especially when it comes to us undersized guys going against these bigger defenders. Sometimes you feel like there's just nothing you can do, but trust me, there's always tricks that you can work on. Now, you're not going to be able to get into a game and think about this stuff. Obviously, this is for training, so you learn it. Luckily for you guys, you could just learn it on YouTube, learn it in this video, go rep it out until it becomes habit. You got to develop that skill. Come game time, you're not even going to have to think twice. You got all these different superpowers, all these different moves to pull from, and you pull the right move in the right situation. You get buckets. That's what it's all about. Until next time, I'm out.